Hello, welcome to Yellow Door Urban Homestead. I am Asia and I'm an urban gardener growing in a small space in my backyard. So it has been raining all day, y'all. Literally all day. It's like six something, maybe six something right now. And I had things I needed to do <laughs> out here. Yes, it is 612. So um, I never got around to ordering a new rain bearer. I still will, but I'm probably going to do it in the spring because I'm just going to have to take it down in the winter anyway. So I just put another tote down here. It's one of the totes that we had raised the quail in or the chicken. I don't know. So I just put another one down here to catch the rain until next spring when I can go ahead and get a rain barrel again. So we're going to fertilize real quick. Perfect time to fertilize. The soil is nice and moist. Um, it's not supposed to rain anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and fertilize. I'm going to use fish emulsion. Let me grab it and show you. <laughs> If you are not new here, you've seen this before. It is 511 Fish Emulsion. And this is pretty much what I fertilize my fall garden with because fall vegetables are pretty much all greenery in most cases. <laughs> and Fish Emulsion is a high nitrogen fertilizer. So that's why I use that um, on my fall garden. I do have some comfrey tea going, but I'm going to let that go in whatever I can get before the uh, first frost comes. I'm going to save that for the spring garden. So this is a two gallon watering can. I do one watering can of fish emulsion to a garden bed. So let's get to it because you know what else I need to do I want so the uh, dinosaur kale started to grow and like I could see the second set of leaves so I'm gonna go ahead and move those around the garden too um, in the spaces that are like open like where the uh, parsnips did not come up I'm just gonna plant a dinosaur kale there if the parsnips comes up then I can thin them to still grow with the dinosaur kale but yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna put something there because it's coming very close to time where I won't be able to really plant anything that's going to really grow so let's go ahead fertilize and then we're gonna get that done And just like that, we have fertilized all of the garden beds. It did not take long at all. Um, and so the other thing that I said I needed to do, oh, by the way, I want to show y'all some of those vegetables that had gotten eaten down. I think it was a lot of the kale. Matter of fact, one of them is this kohlrabi right here. I'm going to show you real quick that the leaves grew back. I ain't spray none, y'all. <laughs> So here's the kohlrabi, I think from my last tour that was eaten all the way down, no leaves in the middle. It grew back, I'm so excited. And the kohlrabi is bulbing in this bed. I'm so excited, like we gotta put kohlrabi bulbs coming. And now let's go look at the kale that was eaten down to like little sticks. <laughs> look y'all, look at that. It's growing. It might not get me anything in fall, but I'm pretty sure spring, I will get some, but it's growing back. And so is the other one. Those were the ones that was eaten down. This was the one I said was a volunteer and I just left it. Look, growing leaves. And like I said, I didn't spray nothing cause I'm not a sprayer. I just let my garden do what my garden may do. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, let's go ahead and move this dinosaur kale. Um, we probably are going to harvest some of this roseo too. I still haven't tried the drink, but I am letting the flowers, um, the petals, I guess is what you would call them. I'm letting them dry because I am going to try the drink. Um, I am going to leave this plant, this one right here, even if it gets a frost, because look at that y'all. Apparently it is a spider's nest. So I'm going to leave that, but the plants are looking real good. Look at them. I mean, just big and bushy. I think I had said over on Instagram that like Roselle is always going to grow in my garden. Like they were so easy. They are beautiful. They get huge. Like Roselle sorrel will always grow in my garden. This is my first year growing it. And I just thought it was so pretty. I had two more and I had to pull them out because I had to get the garden ready for fall. Um, so I won't put them in the actual garden beds because I know I have to pull them next year. Learning lessons, right? <laughs> but they'll definitely be here. I mean, I think it's just the prettiest thing. Look at it from over here, y'all. It is so pretty. 
And the flowers look like okra flowers. Okra flowers are pretty to me too. I don't like okra, so I don't grow it. I grew it one year and I was like, whoa, I don't like this. But yes, that roselle is gonna stay because it has a spider nest in it and I am so excited. I want them all here next year. I actually really grew to enjoy having them. Like I didn't want them on me, but I enjoyed having them around and seeing them in the garden. Like they were pretty. I had the yellow ones. Someone told me the name, I don't remember it. <laughs> But I really enjoyed having them in the garden. Um, so I'm getting way more comfortable with um, like insects and bugs and things like that. Cause like the first time I saw a tomato hornworm, I just knew I won't garden it no more. I was gonna let them have a whole garden. But I've even gotten used to them. I think they're kind of pretty. Um, I don't want them on my tomatoes, but I think they're kind of pretty. <laughs> All right, so one thing that I am not doing, I am not fertilizing my peppers anymore. Like. They just going, you know, they going to go for what they know because I'm not fertilizing them anymore. As I get them, I'm still picking them. I'm still harvesting them, but I'm not, I'm not fertilizing them anymore. Reality is I'm not taking care of the peppers anymore, <laughs> but they are still producing. Um, I am not fertilizing the um, Tromacino squash anymore, but by the way, it's a whole bunch of them on here. Let me show you. Look, one right there. Now, is it pollinated? I don't know, but... They were really trying to grow. So, learning lesson for me this year is plant a late crop of tromboncino squash because they are popping up everywhere. My first frost is, oh, like, look, look. Look at that one right there. See? Yeah. And there's another one right here. So lesson for me is plant a late crop of, um, you know, tromboncino squash at the end of summer, like close to the end of summer. Cause that plant, look how pretty it look on my trellis too. I love it. That plant is really like producing right now. Same thing with the beans. I harvested these the other day, but look. More beans. See? So I'm definitely gonna have to do those late plantings next year in places where I'm not gonna grow anything in fall. Cause I'm definitely still picking things that were planted in the summer late summer mid summer um i'm still picking those things so yeah i i mean i've learned quite a bit over this season i'm still ready to pick them sweet uh, sweet potatoes y'all i want to pick them sweet potatoes Sweet potatoes so bad. Harvest them because you ain't really picking sweet potatoes. But I really want to harvest them sweet potatoes so bad. But I'm going to leave them. I'm going to leave them. Somebody said leave them till after the first frost. Is that is that right? I don't know. I thought it, you had to pick them before the first frost. Like don't let the frost hit them. I know it'll kill the plant for sure. Not sure. I wasn't sure about like the actual potatoes. Do y'all know? I, I've only seen it once, which is why I'm asking. I think I'm gonna pick it before the frost, first frost anyway. But which do should I? Should I leave them? Are they gonna get bigger and sweeter if I leave them? I don't know if I even got the patience <laughs> to leave them because I want to see what's in there so bad. Because you know I picked some. <laughs> I picked some, it was over on Instagram. I was digging, getting nosy. And then I just ended up picking, I think three plants maybe. I think that's what I did. <laughs> but I ain't gonna pick no more. I ain't, ain't gonna pick no more, y'all. Um, all right, that might be all of the beans at this point, but I'm real excited. I love green beans. Now, I also won't pull that plant down cause it's just plant. It's still big bushy plant. But I'm not doing it because it's still producing. It still produces so well. I'm all over the place tonight. I'm just talking. It's very vloggy. <laughs> um, I'm just talking. But y'all, look at the garden. I'm going to turn it around. Oh, by the way, so this morning I helped my sister move. She moved to the bigger city near us, which is exciting for her. I'm so excited for her. This was also my first week back to work after my vacation. Um, and luckily for me, oh look, so this is one of the older green bean plants that I had put in, right? It started growing again and started producing beans. Look, I'm going to show you. So everything on here is pretty much dead. Y'all remember this trellis, right? Out of nowhere, this plant 
just started growing again. Look, it's even got like dried beans on it. And but somewhere along the line, it started growing again. So I left it. I thought that was pretty cool. And remember I told you I had some volunteer um, purple potted? That's getting ready to go back up the trellis. I doubt I'm gonna get any actual beans off of it though, cause that started, that volunteered very late. Uh, but I'm gonna just pan across the guy so y'all can see it. And then we gonna plant these, these uh, dinosaur kale. We're going in the house cause it's about to get dark out here. But look, garden bed one, cinder block. And my leeks are starting to get bigger, y'all. So I think it was a good idea to leave them like everybody told me. I have fertilized with um, fish emulsion when I fertilize everything else. They getting, they looking real good and getting thicker. They really are. Um, so this garden bed number two, kohlrabi in the front, broccoli, collards, uh, cabbages, kale back here. This is another kale plant that got eight down. I don't know if I ever showed y'all this one though. And that's growing back real nicely too. And then you got garden bed number three. Lots of broccoli, kohlrabi in the front, Swiss chard, cabbage. It's onions all in these beds too. So about the onions, they're not coming up in every brick because like I said, I had let um, it dry out because it's when I was out of town, but they're coming up in a lot of bricks and they're coming up two to three a brick depending on how many seeds I put in it. So I'm just gonna wait and see what we get and when they get a little bit thicker, I'm just gonna move the extra ones and I think I'll still be able to fill out all of the bricks and I'll still get me a nice little um, onion harvest that's gonna be overwintered. <laughs> the peppers right here still look good. Look at this green pepper. Actually, I think it's like two of them back here. Look, they huge. It's three of them, that's it. They huge. So I'm waiting until they turn colors. Um, if it does it before the first frost, if it does it, then I'll take them in the house and let them ripen or I just keep them as green peppers. My daughter likes green peppers. Like she makes stuff, green peppers and stuff. So whatever, however they are at the first frost, I'll still harvest them and take them in the house. That's garden bed number four. Those are mostly radishes, rutabaga, turnips, carrots are in there too. Um, this is where I put my parsnips, but this is where we also going to plant two, um, dinosaur kale so I'm not wasting space. Garden bed number, what is that? Five. That is mostly kale and collars. There's one tiny broccoli down here. Um, it was an extra that I noticed I had and then that's some more dinosaur kale but I don't think it's getting enough light to get bigger right now. So I'm probably going to plant one right there too but I'm still going to leave those seeds. And then of course, you know, all of my summer stuff that's still in. So, it's looking real good out here. Watch out, babe cakes. This, this my doggie. Where you at, girl? Hey, girl. Hey. Hey, sweetie. That my baby, y'all. <laughs> she been going to my garden like she don't know that she not supposed to be a day. Cause why? <laughs> so, I'm, um, I said I'm gonna get my little yellow door fixed up, y'all, so I can, um, the chickens hollering. Oh, y'all can't see me. I don't know, oh, here you go. I found it. I'm just gonna dig them out real quick. I do have my gloves because I don't want to mess my nails up. I'm, I'm keeping that. I'm keeping up with that. Oh, look. Let me show y'all the loofah, too. Look, they gonna end up having to dry in the house, especially the newer ones, but they looking good. Like, this one is drying on the vine. This one is also drying on the vine. So, there's new ones growing. They may not even get big enough for drying. They say you can eat it. I tried it. It was disgusting to me. Do you eat loofah? <laughs> It was not, it was not delicious to me. I didn't like it at all. Um, they say when it's smaller, you can eat it, but no, I won't, I won't be doing that. <laughs> all right, let's dig these up real quick. Okay, so this is a group that just, I had put a bunch of seeds in here, but not on purpose. Um, and they, a lot of them sprouted. So we just gonna pull them up and separate them kind of get the soil off of them and you can get to the just the seedlings see now all you got you got just the seedlings now and we gonna oh that's one right here I'm gonna leave that one over here this is gonna be the one I leave I'm gonna kind of tighten the soil a little bit more and drop it back down in there and it should I probably should leave two but we're gonna just leave this one and I planted it kind of deep 
and I will show you as it starts to grow. Rest of them, we're gonna start moving around the garden. 